to the first uh, faculty academic staff forum of the semester. And um, this semester and next semester, both we're starting with centennial topics, this being our centennial year. So today, um, Robert Goff, um, formerly of the history department, is going to talk about students kicking campus. Thank you. Uh, this comes out of a larger project that uh, Jim Oberly, another history professor, and I did. Uh, which is to write a history of UW-Eau Claire uh, for the uh, centennial. And I have a little handout about that if you interest, might be interested in that. You can take that. And that was support, supported in part by money from uh, the Office of uh, Research and Sponsored Programs that paid for some students to help on the research uh, on that project. What I want to talk about briefly today is how students have uh, voted over the hundred years uh, of the university's history. And there's no grand thesis or, or sophisticated theory here. Uh, but the point seems to be, we'll just go through the elections and I'll, I'll talk about them, uh, or the important ones, one at a time. And I sort of have uh, ad hoc explanations for what happened and why students voted the way they did. Uh, if there's a pattern, it seems to be that the, understandably, Students are, for the most time, first-time voters. Um, they don't have strong partisan allegiances, haven't been established yet. So they're more likely to swing in more extreme ways than the population as, as a whole and uh, change from one election to another. They're less stable. Uh, their voting is less stable than the country uh, as a whole. Now, we do have to be careful that the, the data is not great here. Um, so uh, in, in for the first 50 years or so, it's uh, just surveys and straw polls and things like that, which weren't done very scientifically. Uh, after 1972, uh, as you know, there's an award in Eau Claire, which is all students, voters. So that gives, you, gives us a little better idea of, uh, a little more precise idea of how students voted. But still, there's problems with that, too. So um, we, we have to be careful and uh, uh, don't push the data too far here. Okay, well, we'll start with um, the first election, which was in 1916, uh, a few weeks after the school opened. Now, the school opened as a normal school for, for teachers in uh, 1916. And it was designed to draw students from the area around Eau Claire, what was known as the district. And you really weren't supposed to enroll students from outside the district. Certainly don't recruit them. Um, so they, at the beginning, they largely come from around Eau Claire. That gradually changes over time, and the students become more representative of the state as a whole. Um, the first uh, poll was taken just a few weeks after the school opened in 1916. The results were kind of surprising uh, to me. Uh, the students strongly preferred the incumbent uh, president, Woodrow Wilson, over Republican Charles Evans Hughes. Even though Hughes uh, won Wisconsin as a whole, Eau Claire County, all the counties around here, students really went in another direction and preferred uh, the Democrat, uh, Woodrow Wilson. Um, my explanation is, is deference. Uh, they, these were almost all women, young women, many of them 17, 16, 17 even, um, 18. Um, and they simply deferred to the incumbent Wilson, he was the president, so they just vote for him. That is supported by the fact that the students also preferred uh, the incumbent governor and the incumbent United States senator, uh, who were very different. One was a progressive, Robert La Follette, who was running for governor, or the senator, and Emmanuel Phillip, the governor, who was a very conservative Republican. So the students, or at least a, a large group of them, seemed to prefer the incumbent. That's what was important, rather than any party or, or, or ideology. Really, anyway, that's, that's my hypothesis for, for this first election. Um, going ahead to um, 1924. Um, this is an interesting one, too. Um, and again, they show. Um, deference. They support the incumbent president, uh, Calvin Coolidge. But here, they're, but again, they are voting differently than um, the state, 
and the Eau Claire region, both of which prefer to vote for Robert La Follette, who is running as a third party progressive uh, candidate. And he won the state and was actually very popular in western Wisconsin. Students, though, prefer Coolidge, uh, the Republican candidate. Um, again, it could be the deference thing. Um, but here, it just seems that these students are conservative. And uh, they're going for the more conservative candidate. And for 1924, we know quite a bit about how students across the country voted. There was some scholarship that was done 30 years ago. That's, that's well known. And it found that college students just were conservative. And they, uh, they, they preferred Coolidge and, and strongly went for Coolidge. So it, it seems here that by 1924, Eau Claire students are so, sort of getting in line with the way students think and, and their values that uh, are, are nationwide by that time in, uh, in 1924. Again, and that seems to be the case with 1928 as well. Again, they vote uh, for the conservative candidate. Um, this is actually a more uh, uh, clear-cut conservative uh, liberal in 1928, and they strongly prefer Herbert Hoover. The 1936 uh, results are also very interesting. Here the students split right down the middle. It was almost a tie. There was just a couple of vote difference uh, between the incumbent president, Franklin Roosevelt, and the Republican challenger, uh, Alf Landon. And again, the students differ here from the uh, state as a whole, which is over 60% for Roosevelt, and um, the Eau Claire and the area around Eau Claire, which is also for Roosevelt. I don't, don't know how much. But they're, they're bucking the trend again in, in sticking or going with Landon, or at least half of them going with uh, Landon. They're also going against their self-interest. 40% uh, of them are receiving financial aid through the National Youth Administration, which was a pioneering program by the federal government, which had been set up as part of the New Deal, um, to uh, give stipends uh, to, to students. It was, part of it was a work study. Part of it was, well, there's different components to it. But it was an important program. And it reached a lot of uh, Eau Claire students, 40%, by the fall of 1936. We're getting federal money. We're benefiting from the New Deal. Um, but that doesn't seem to have persuaded all of them uh, to, uh, to vote for, for Roosevelt. Uh, they vote for Landon, who would have ended that program and, and put them out of, out of work, out of money. Um, so what was going on here? Well, again, they, apparently the students are, and we know from uh, Nationwide, there's a, there were two, the newspapers uh, did two aggregations of how students voted at different colleges and universities around the country. So we know quite a bit. And at public colleges and universities, students go for Roosevelt um, very strongly, actually, at that, and at the, the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And most public universities, the students are voting for Roosevelt. That's not quite as clear cut at the private colleges, w which the students are more affluent. Um, there's some of them still go for Landon. But clearly, there's a swift. There's a, there's a trend nationwide towards, uh, towards Roosevelt. The Democrats, more liberal positions. Maybe that's going on a little bit at Eau Claire. I mean, they, Roosevelt gets half the vote. He's doing better than, the, than um, Al Smith did in 1928. Um, so maybe there's some of that going on here, but it's not as strong, apparently, at Eau Claire as it is uh, nationwide. Uh, Roosevelt only gets half the vote. Um, it's not the socioeconomic explanation doesn't work here. The students, another part of the research that uh, Jim and I did, we looked at the socioeconomic backgrounds of the students or their students' fathers. And actually, it's kind of amazingly broad uh, they come from. Um, a lot of farmers and a lot of working class. It's not, it's not a perfect distribution. It's tilted a little bit towards uh, better off uh, backgrounds, to be sure. Um, but it's, it was certainly surprising to me um, how broad the socioeconomic backgrounds of the students were. So it wasn't that the students were all that well off and were therefore voting for the conservative candidate, uh, Land, and that doesn't, uh, that doesn't seem to be, the, uh, seem, seem to be what's uh, happening here. The students do tend to be native-born in comparison to um, the general population in, uh, in the United States and, and in Wisconsin. They're more likely to have had parents who were born in the United States. Um, they are not, they're, they're not immigrants themselves, and they're not the children of immigrants. That does tilt you Republican. So that, that might have 
affected some of the, some of the, some of the background, some of the explanation. Um, whatever the case is, though, to me, it's kind of remarkable that the students were so uh, conservative in the election of 1936. We, okay, that's it. We don't, um, we don't know about the 1940 election. 44, they were very close, and uh, the survey wasn't very good, so um, we, we can't draw too many conclusions. Actually, the next interesting election is in 1952, um, and the students strongly prefer, again, 65 or 67 percent, uh, prefer Dwight Eisenhower, the Republican uh, candidate. I like Ike. Um, that seems to have resonated uh, with the students, um, as it did nationwide. And uh, they, um, the, the personality, uh, he was just the um, attractive personality, and that seems to have uh, uh, hit with the students. What's interesting is the way in which Eau Claire students voted on what's called the, da the down ballot candidates, the other candidates on the 1952 ballot. Also running in Wisconsin in 1952 was Senator Joseph McCarthy, who was quite controversial for his um, certain uh, conservative, for his conservative positions, particularly his claims about um, um, communists in, in allegedly in government positions and traitors and things like that. Um, and he was running for re-election, and he was he he was re-elected. He won in Wisconsin in 1952. Um, the students, however, at Eau Claire did not vote for him. They voted for Eisenhower, the Republican, for president. They went for the Democrat for uh, senator. In that sense, they were unlike, we know, a couple of the other Wisconsin state colleges um, sort of voted straight ticket down the line, Republican. Madison, though, at the University of Wisconsin, they voted like the Eau Claire students. They preferred Eisenhower strongly, but then they went against McCarthy. Um, so why, why the split, why the sort of what's called split ticket? Why did they vote Republican for President, Democrat for uh, uh, Senator? Well, uh, part of the explanation is that the Republicans around Eau Claire, the Eau Claire County Republican Party, was not uh, enthusiastic about McCarthy. And the, and the newspapers did not endorse him. So there was a kind of general feeling, I think, in the area. He was not real popular. And also, the president of the college, William R. Davies, um, signed, and several members of the faculty uh, signed a big uh, advertisement in the newspaper along with 50 other people uh, denouncing McCarthy and uh, endorsing his opponent. Uh, kind of a bold uh, thing to do for the uh, college president to uh, make that uh, public and, and partisan uh, statement. But Davies did it. Davies was a very firm person. He was Republican himself. Now, that was part of it. Yeah, he was a Republican himself, but he was coming out against uh, McCarthy, uh, very firm. He was, he was a very um, firm-minded person, I mean, stubborn, some people <laughs> thought. But you could see it as firm-minded, very principled. I mean, if something was right, then he was going to stick with it. Um, and surely this episode uh, reflects that, that. He felt this was very important that McCarthy be defeated, and he put his name on, a, um, on, on this advertisement. And that got statewide attention, too, in the statewide newspapers that the college president was uh, against McCarthy. So that may have influenced the, the student voting. So what you have here then in 1952 seems to be the effect on the students of influentials, whether it's the local newspaper or the, the faculty and the president seem to have influenced some of the students in terms of uh, their voting behavior. That was 52. Now in 56, the students continue to prefer Eisenhower and, um, and vote overwhelmingly for, for him. The 1960 election was a very close one and uh, between John Kennedy, who becomes the winner, and uh, Vice President Richard Nixon. Kennedy had visited Eau Claire and come to campus in November of 1959 uh, as part of his campaigning for the Wisconsin primary. So he was sort of a known person on campus, gave a talk in what's now Pure Auditorium uh, to a packed uh, house on Latin American policy. So he was sort of known uh, on campus. The vote was very close uh, in statewide, too. I, I believe Nixon won, but it was very close. Um, it was also very close among the students, 50-50. Um, the spectator, however, said there was extensive fraud in, <laughs> in the uh, student voting. It was a straw poll kind of thing. Um, so we, we can't 
do too much with that in, in, in 60. 64, though, it, again, is an interesting election um, in that the students overwhelmingly, 67%, I believe, go for the Democratic candidate, uh, Lyndon Johnson. And I interpret that as kind of their endorsement of the emerging civil rights movement. Martin Luther King had just spoken on campus. There's other indications that at least some students were interested in civil rights and things like that. Uh, certainly, that was a big issue. The uh, Republicans were against the Civil Rights Act of 1964 that had just been passed. And um, I, I interpret that as the part of the reason, anyway, why the students strongly went. More than, more than statewide, more than Eau Claire, uh, the students went for Johnson in 64. But what's interesting in 64 is there was also the governor race on the ballot. And here, the students, like everybody in Wisconsin, or like the general result, uh, went against the incumbent Democratic uh, governor, Governor Reynolds, and voted him out and preferred a Republican. And the reason was there was unpopularity with the tax increases that had come with the uh, 63 to 65 biennium uh, budget. And there was a reaction against that, um, and Reynolds gets voted out. The reason for the tax increases was increased spending, and it was the the University of Wisconsin and the Wisconsin State Universities that were the beneficiaries of that increased uh, spending. <laughs> Faculty got a 6% raise in the uh, fall of 1963. They were very happy about that. But it resulted in a backlash. And the students, again, seemed to vote against their interests here. Uh, as, as money had been spent for their benefit, uh, or part of it, you know, a, a significant part of it, went for their benefit, uh, their education. Uh, but they didn't see it that way. and they went along with the general opinion that, uh, you know, cut taxes and, and vote Reynolds out. All right. Okay. Um, we don't know about 68. We just don't know what happened, how students voted in 68. 72, another interesting election. This pitted the uh, George McGovern, the Democrat, who was running on a strong anti-Vietnam War uh, platform against uh, the incumbent Republican President Richard Nixon. And the students went narrowly for McGovern, 52% for McGovern, um, which indeed uh, was more than Wisconsin as a state, 45%. So they, they, they showed some preference for uh, McGovern. But still, 52% uh, was actually less than what McGovern got in the city of Eau Claire. So the students were less likely to be McGovernites than you know, the people in the, uh, in the city. And it was certainly disappointing for the McGovern uh, campaign, uh, which had expected a student vote to be strongly in favor of, of, of them. And this is what happened nationwide. It was about 50-50 among the you know, 18 to 24-year-old uh, vote or whatever the, they measured. About 50-50 nationwide. And you know, again, about 50-50 probably uh, in Eau Claire. And, and this also shows that while it shows well, two things, I and mean, you can emphasize that there was this significant protest and uh, dissatisfaction protest on campus in the 1960s. Over half the students vote for McGovern, that's true. Um, but it's not the 70 or 80 or 90 percent they <laughs> you might have thought. Um, and there weren't all that many uh, radicals around. Uh, and in the case of Eau Claire, that's true. I mean, it was a, it was a moderate. There was never a strong protest. There was never the, the violence that there was at Madison and things like that. Um, so instead, you wind up with half of them voting for McGovern in 1972. Um, after that, the student preferences turned strongly to the, to the right. And you can see in 1976, only 33% of the students vote for the Democrat, uh, Jimmy Carter. And that's actually at the, the largest deviation. I believe it's the largest deviation the students ever make. From the, from the statewide vote. Uh, certainly after World War II, it's the largest deviation. The students are different. So here, sometimes they're voting like the country does uh, for Eisenhower in 52. Uh, but sometimes they deviate dramatically. And the 76 is the most dramatic deviation. Um, they prefer Gerald Ford over Jimmy Carter. Carter came to Eau Claire a couple weeks before the election and didn't bother coming to campus. I probably have been told that the, <laughs> the uh, um, what the mood was, and you're not, not going to be greeted very warmly. Uh, Spectator ran an editorial denouncing uh, Carter, 
They ran a really mean uh, editorial cartoon about him. Um, and he you know, winds up doing very, very poorly. Um, it's a little hard to explain. Um, my hypothesis, again, this is just speculation, is that the students identified more with Jerry Ford. He was a Midwesterner, uh, kind of an all-American type uh, football player. Um, had young adult children, or maybe they were still college age or young adult age children. Um, some of them publicly identified as smoking marijuana. It, maybe the students identified more with, with Ford than they did with Carter, who came across in the campaign certainly as very moralistic, uh, self-righteous was the criticism. Um, and it, uh, I, I, I'm just guessing that somehow that didn't register, at least with the, uh, with the Eau Claire students. Certainly then, uh, 76 is, is strange. Uh, the students are a little bit more democratic in uh, 1980. Uh, the, the data is skewed a little bit because we don't have the local, we only have the two parties and not the third candidate, John Anderson, in 1980. So that makes the uh, um, analysis not easy to make in 1980. But uh, the students still preferred Republican Ronald Reagan to, and in a, in a straight vote, they preferred Reagan to, to uh, Carter in, in 1980. And then you can see in the 1980s then, the, how, they, how, how conservative they are. Um, in, in 84, 40, where Reagan is running for re-election, they go 45-34. Uh, now the Spectator does endorse uh, Walter Mondale, the Democrat, but that seems to be ignored by most students. They, they, they prefer uh, Reagan. Um, but beginning in 1988, uh, there's a shift to, to more liberal, toward more liberal candidates, preferring more liberal candidates to Democrats. Uh, and they vote uh, narrowly in, in 88 uh, for, for the Democrats, a little bit more than the statewide percentage. That becomes greater in 1992 and even greater uh, in, uh, in 1996 when Bill Clinton is reelected. 1992 and 1996 are the Clinton uh, election. Again, in 96, we don't get the Ross Perot vote, so that throws off the, the, the calculation. Uh, but still, the, the clear pattern is that they're, they're moving to the left and they're preferring, uh, preferring the Democratic candidates. And you can see that in both the uh, 2000 and 2004 uh, results, 11% more than the statewide percentages. Uh, the, the peak is in 2008 when President Obama is elected, gets 68% of the vote in the student ward. That's uh, significantly more than the, uh, his percentage statewide. Uh, Obama comes to uh, Eau Claire a couple of times actually. Uh, he has a rally uh, in, the, in the arena in March, or I guess it was early April, um, for the primary uh, campaign. And um, as it was nationwide with uh, younger voters, um, Obama seemed to have, to have registered. And here, Eau Claire students are like students nationwide in, in going, for, going for Obama. And that's true in, in the reelection of 2012, too, although it begins to weaken uh, a little bit. What's also uh, moving the students democratic in the, by, the, by the 90s and in the uh, 21st century is the fact that the student body is shifting in terms of its makeup uh, and becoming much more um, uh, female, over 60% by the 21st century, are, are women. And, that, and their, their a gender gap is opening in terms of voting. So as you get more women in the student body, that just naturally is going to push the way they, their, their partisan preferences towards, towards the Democrats. And that, so that accounts for a couple of the percentage points of difference, is the simple demographic difference uh, in makeup of the student body. Okay, so where do we stand? Where do we stand now today in the election that's coming up? Um, well, a year ago when I was writing the book, um, I detected or I thought or I suggested that the student body was becoming more conservative. Um, and that partly, you can see the shift from 2008 to 2012. In the 2014 gubernatorial election, um, students only narrowly preferred Mary Burke over um, Scott Walker, even despite or because of the issue of the 
um, funding for the UW system. That was, that was a big issue. Um, they, and again, in, in, in the 2014 election, the students were less democratic than the Eau Claire as a whole, uh, significantly. Um, so uh, there's that possibility. Um, Niche.com ranks all colleges, uh, not all colleges, uh, 880 nationwide on how conservative or liberal uh, they are. And they ranked where most conservative is one. Um, that's, uh, I think it's BYU or, or, the, or the military academy is very hot. Anyway, that's one. And then eight, 880 would be the least. I think that's Oberlin or Antioch or someplace like that. Um, UW-Eau Claire is 248th, so they're considerably on the conservative end uh, of the rankings, according to uh, niche.com. That's sort of the, they're measuring what the attitudes of the students are and the, uh, um, and, and the political, uh, our atmosphere, political atmosphere on, on campus. So it, to the extent that they're right, that would suggest a conservative uh, movement. Um, however, 2016, maybe, maybe I wasn't right. Um, uh, uh, various unexpected de developments here. Um, and um, I, in the spring primary, in, um, the students, first of all, they, they voted uh, strongly in the Democratic primary. 68% uh, voted in the Democratic primary versus 55% in Eau Claire County and 48% uh, statewide. So they seem to be keeping this Democratic to, that may be an indication they're keeping Democratic uh, identification. And they strongly preferred Senator Sanders. Um, he, of all the students that voted uh, in Republican or Democrat, there were five candidates running, um, Bernie got 61% of all the votes um, compared to 35% in Eau Claire County and 27% statewide. That's, that's kind of remarkable. Um, and that, that, that is really remarkable, actually. And 90% of the Democratic votes um, in the Democratic primary went to, went to Bernie. Um, so, the, um, so the question is, will those, that strong support for Sanders in the primary, will that translate into support for Hillary Clinton uh, next month uh, or in, in November? Um, possibly, uh, but it, it's partly an enthusiasm kind of thing. Will that enthusiasm transfer over? Or will uh, some of the Sanders voters, because they're uh, dissatisfied uh, or protesting, want change, uh, will they go for Donald Trump? Uh, or will they stay home because they're not enthusiastic about uh, Hillary Clinton? I, I, you can just speculate on that. Uh, you'll know in, in a couple of weeks how that will work. But it's important. Uh, it's important in Wisconsin because um, Wisconsin, at least in the uh, 2012 election, had the third highest voting rate among young adults of any state. So the young adult vote is, is important in Wisconsin. Um, but if Eau Claire students are indicative, it's sort of up in the air in terms of uh, where it will go uh, in the November election. Okay, so a hasty survey of a century of elections. I don't have a um, takeaway conclusion here. As you, but, but to repeat what I said at the outset, uh, the, the students, are, you get more um, extreme variation uh, shifting from election to election for different reasons uh, in terms of their preferences. I'd be glad to, uh, people may have other ideas or other suggestions to explain some of these elections or, or questions about them. I'd, I'd be glad to um, respond to any questions. Was the niche.com, is that a survey? What it's based on student, they, they get student opinion. I don't know exactly how they do it, um, but it's based on student opinion. I don't know how much of it is voluntary. I think they contact students and they rely on the ones that answer. Uh, so, it, so it's not, you know, it, that it's maybe a little, that, it may be questionable. But the results at the extremes are what you would expect yeah. in terms of liberal the stereotypes of where the liberal and conservative places are. So uh, there, there's, some, there's some validity to it. Um, but yeah, you, you don't want to make too much out of out of that. Other uh, questions? So the seventy. Let me go back to the seventy-two. Is this this slide is this chart is of the actual ward? Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, begin, yes, beginning in 1972, we have at least one ward. Sometimes there's two. Uh, that is 100, all students. And so, now that's, again, that's not perfect representation. These are students who are living in the dorms, uh, and they're not necessarily perfect representation of, of the student body. And that's, that's a problem. But, uh, but we're, yeah, so we're just going by that uh, on this chart. And again, that, that, could, that could easily be off by several percentage points. Probably is a little bit. But I think the trends are rather dramatic. And so, I mean, I think they're, they, they're probably valid. Is, yeah. is there any correlation, possibly, to when the when Oak Claire started having more students from Minnesota come yeah. to our campus? Yeah, that, that complicates it, the Minnesota people. We don't know how many of the Minnesota people vote in Wisconsin and how many of them vote in Minnesota. And so that, that's, that's, that complicates it a lot. Um, Presumably, the Minnesota students are voting more conservatively because they have higher socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, so perhaps this is distorted. This may be distorted a little bit uh, towards the left because it's excluding disproportionate number of more affluent students. That, that's a possibility with these recent, uh, especially by the, by the 1980s when you begin to get the significant Minnesota application. Yeah, so that's something that I, it, 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 it would be good to actually do a, do some kind of survey. I don't know. I, since 1972, I don't know of any survey that's been done of the students, um, you know, uh, asking them this. Maybe it has, but I, I don't know what it is. But that would be interesting to do. I wonder if um, we've got the college Dems and the college Republicans. I wonder if it would be fruitful to look at membership in those. That's that's something else that could be done. Although it's, I don't. I don't know how long they've existed. They've did, okay. Um, mm, I think they came along right after World War II. Okay. I think I think if I if I remember correctly, they were very they seem to have been very active uh, back in the back in the fifties and sixties. At least they get a lot of coverage uh, in the Spectator. Um, I don't know of any records that they in, you know, they were up in the archives. I, I've never seen a collection. So membership. Mm, it's hard. I think it would be hard to get at that. You can get at it um, by what activity, by what they're doing. You can find out, you can do that from the newspaper. Or, well, maybe one way to do that would be to look at the pictures in the, spec, in the uh, uh, Periscope, which is student. You, you, students had a yearbook uh, down until 1995. And there would be pictures of organizations. Um, and you could look at the pictures and just see how many are in the picture. And that, that's a crude, might be a crude way to measure uh, interest. Or maybe that combined with newspaper reports and that kind of could thing. Could do that. Yeah. See, an another uh, thing to think about here in terms of evaluating the uh, students is student government, of course, which uh, since the 1970s has been almost always very conservative on, on, uh, um, on, on, for, on a variety of issues. Um, so they're able to win, and they're, they've become closely connected with the Republican Party. Um, so they're able to win the on-campus elections, even with very low turnouts. But they're able; they have the ground game uh, to to win to win elections. So there may be enthusiasm. So again, the pictures might be misleading. Uh, they might show uh, equal numbers, but they don't measure uh, the uh, enthusiasm or the organization, which the Republicans seem to have among, the, among the, or many generally have among among the students in order to win the student government elections. Okay. Well, I thank you for coming, and uh, be sure to vote. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah.